Hello, welcome to the Golf Swing Weekly Fix. My name is Mark Crossfield. In this week's show, we've got all the regular swingers coming at you from iPhone app, iPad app, Android app. So people sending swings through the app, getting on the show and getting some help, and hopefully you can learn from them too. We've also got a great new feature this week, and I'm going to try and include it in the other weeks, where we talk about some golf terminology, some words you might be hearing, maybe not quite understanding. So we're going to talk about a few words. Today we're going to talk about dynamic loft and what that means and how it could help or hinder your golf game, your understanding of it. And we've also got the regular question of the week. So loads to do. Let's get stuck in. So we're going to take a close look at setup. I see this a lot. It's very common. And it's intricate, but it makes a massive difference. And this is something that you'll see good players just not do. So if I draw a straight line down from your right hip, what we see is very much the right leg kicking out, bowing out, and we see the right leg over the middle of your right foot, which is basically where your weight is on that right side, where we see the left hip doing the opposite. That's on the inside of your, hip, of your left foot. What you want to do, if you want to get a good positive setup, which allows you to make swings, where you don't make movements, where you might fold more in this right leg and load all the way on the outside of your right foot where you should be loading it all on the inside, which then in turn make for much more solid weight transfers where you do actually get over onto your left side on the way through. You've got to do that from the setup. You've got to have that intent from the beginning. So let me show you what I mean. So we're saying, I see this loads, it's so common. Um, it's intricate, but it makes a massive, massive difference. You won't see a decent player, world-class certainly, who doesn't start with the right hip over the inside of their right foot. And then in turn, what happens is my right leg has this slight kick in. So if I just stand straight, and a common mistake that people are making, if I just stand straight and bend my knees, so they read books, right, you've got to, set yourself and bend your legs. What happens is my legs tend to bend forward with some people slightly out and then they're hitting from there. Now there's no resistance in this right side. I'm just going to move over. My weight all rolls onto the outside of my right foot if it isn't there already at the beginning. So look, for you to get into a good solid impact position where you've moved your weight onto the left foot, rotated onto your left side and you're really starting to straighten your left leg up, you need to start with that intent at the beginning. So for me, I am starting my swing with my hips slightly kicked forward, upper body slightly tilted back. That's because I've got one hand lower than the other on the club. So that naturally just pushes my hips forward and sets my upper body slightly leaning away from the target. So that keeps my weight 50-50. I'm not just pushing my hips forward and my weight going forward. So it's this one hand lower than the other that allows these hips to just, just nudge forward at address. Now I can really feel that weight on the inside of my right foot more at address. And as I make my back swing, this kick in of the right knee, this slight kink in, is going to allow me to try and turn more against that side. Rather than if I just stand with my knees bent and then turn, I don't feel there's any resistance in my knees. It makes it harder to hit the ball. So for good solid strikes, you need to be getting into a really nice solid impact position. But you've got to be thinking about the impact position from the setup. My impact position is a driven forward ones. It's like, let's pretend I'm a sprinter. If I'm a sprinter, I'm going to start with my weight in a position that allows me to push down the track. I wouldn't just stand with my weight on my back foot because that split second it takes me to get my weight forward before I push off. I'm, I'm a meter behind the next guy or girl already. So I'm going to set up with my weight 50-50, but my hips set forward to allow me to get this turn onto my left side and this coil on the way back. So set it up from the beginning. Set yourself up. Simply just drop a club down from your right hip, check it's on the inside of your right foot, you'll feel your weight's there, and then you're really trying to turn against that right side so you can then push back onto the left. You'll get more solid strikes, you'll hit the ball better, you'll enjoy your golf more. So we're looking at here, grip issue. Left hand looks a little bit weak. This means that face, the club face, is going to be delivered open, sending the ball to the right which you're going to sense. So what you're going to do to hit the ball is now, look, you can see no intention of moving forward. You're actually leaning back to try and get this returning face angle open ball going to the right 
flipping round to try and get more towards target. Face might get there, but the club path now is going to be to the left. Contradiction between the path and the face is what's going to create your slices, little pulls, all those kinds of things. In this case, fades, slices, push slices, all manner of horrible shots. And it's all stemming around that left-hand grip. We need to get you making a better left-hand grip and then a more conscious effort to try and get off this foot here. Let's get you moving your weight off this back foot. So we're seeing the common, I do a lot of videos where right hand grip's in the wrong place. This is a weak left hand. So left hand showing barely one knuckle, not seeing a good two to maybe even three knuckles on the left hand. One knuckle for me, as I make my swing, delivers the club to the right, delivers it more to this more natural two knuckle position. So that face is now pointing to the right. The only way I can try and hit target from here is to correct that face and you're doing that by leaning back, leaning the shaft back to try and square the face up to your target but by leaning back so much that's going to make you hit across the ball and then you get your spins because what's happening is the face and the path are contradicting each other and off goes the ball so look you've got to work on making sure you're seeing a good two to three knuckles on the left hand for you at the moment i would go for a good three knuckles on the left hand and then from there it's going to feel hideous but if you start with a two to three knuckle left hand then lean back with the face working you're going to get pull hooks so it's important from there, two to three knuckle on the left hand, try your utmost, really to finish with your weight off that right foot, get the right foot right up onto its toe, get the right knee kicking straight over to the left knee, get your hips turning, try and get your right hip to overtake your left hip. So try and get your right hip on the way down to overtake your left hip. You'll feel how that pulls your weight onto your front side and you'll feel how that pulls your back foot up. You can't do that until you get that grip sorted out. Good two to three knuckles on left hand. Like I say, for you with that weak grip, I would go with three. That'll make the face work a little bit better. It then in, in, it enables you, allows you to not hit across the ball and to actually have the confidence to try and hit through it. You'll hit better shots, certainly straighter shots, so your strike will improve dramatically. So thank you to everyone who watches the show every Tuesday. Thanks for everyone who sends Swing and also buys the apps, the iPhone, iPad, and Android app. If you want to get in contact with the show, get the app, send me swings, see if you can get yourself on the show. I don't do every one, but I try and do as many as I can. Also, don't be afraid to go to my fan page. I'm going to put links here and obviously in the description, also on Twitter. If you want to post a comment and ask a question about some terminology, some golfing terminology that you're hearing and not quite understanding, contact me in those ways thanks for watching thanks for getting in contact with the show and keep trying to get in contact and we'll try and help you play as much good golf as you possibly can this is a great new part of the show where we're going to talk about a few some terminology some words that you might be using or seeing or hearing in and around golf and just trying to clear up what they mean and how they might affect you so look we've got track man on what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the word dynamic loft. If you're going to get custom fit, or you've been custom fit, and you'll see numbers on a screen, and your fitter might talk to you about the numbers, one of the numbers that's important is dynamic loft. So, every club has loft. So the angle of the face, the bend back of the face, or not, negative or positive lock, all got positive loft. So this is my seven iron of around 37 degrees. If I hit a shot, so with my 37 degree seven iron, I've hit that nice, solid. Trackman's going to spurt out the dynamic loft number. Dynamic loft, 27.4 degrees. So the dynamic loft on that shot, as I hit that ball, was 27.4. So started with 35 degrees of loft. When I hit the ball, the loft has come down to 27.4. Now, dynamic loft is the actual loft of the club as it strikes the ball. So what is that angle? You go and buy high launching. G20 irons, for example, big thick soles, and you hit the ball, and you're someone who gets ahead of the ball, say, because you tend to hit it low, so you've gone for your high launching irons. Dynamic loft, 15.8 degrees. So the dynamic loft of that shot with the big chunky head is 15.8 degrees. So what influenced that dynamic loft? It wasn't the head, because I've gone up to a chunky head over my six MP64s, which is a bladed head. What influenced that dynamic loft is where I position my club at impact. 
and then in turn my body. So the biggest denominator for influencing the dynamic loft number, shaft does it a little bit, head does it, but you do it more than anything else. The biggest denominator in dynamic loft, if you're thinking about trying to get the right launch and the correct spins, dynamic loft is key to getting the optimum for you to get the best out of your game, subject to the club you're hitting. The biggest denominator is you. So this is why it's so important when you go to your fitting that you're getting fitted by someone a, who understands these numbers, and B, who maybe has a bit of coaching knowledge as well, so hopefully a golf pro or a teacher who can talk to you about why that number might not be where it should be, and then you can make an educated decision in getting the right equipment. So for me, I'm launching a G20, 15 degree dynamic loft. Do I need something that launches higher than a G20? Well, there aren't many things that do higher launch higher than a G20. So surely I should be thinking about what iron I use, subject to the fact that I hit it a bit low, but B, I should be really looking at the fact that maybe I get far too far ahead of the ball. Other things that's going to affect it. If I hit a shot here and simply just open the face up, the point way off to the right, so I've made the regular swing I'd normal make, the ball's gone higher. Opening the face adds loft. 36.4 degrees. 36.4 degrees worth of dynamic loft. So you can see the biggest denominator to moving that number to big degrees is me and how I use the loft, how I use the face. So dynamic loft, guys, dynamic loft is the loft of the club as it strikes the ball. The reason that's important, obviously that's gonna give you a determined a certain launch angle. Also, it, com it combines in with what kind of spin you put on the ball. Now, if you're manipulating the angle through technique, opening faces, closing faces, leaning back, leaning forwards, then getting custom fit is important and you've gotta get custom fit but you've got to be looking at your technique as well. If you're way off the mark with your technique, maybe it's worth having a few lessons before you just, so go to your fitter, talk to them, have two or three lessons, and then do the fit after that. So work with them more on a three week, three month basis, rather than I want clubs next week, I'm going to go and get fit and just get them. So I'm going to get clubs built around me, launching the ball at 15 degree dynamic loft, where actually if I just make a better follow through where I keep my head behind the ball, what might happen is those G20s that I get sold, are going to go too high now. So, 26.0. One last point on dynamic loft. If I just hit one, because people will talk about shafts, how that's going to affect dynamic loft. I'm swinging there just at 78 miles an hour for the video, if you like. If I hit this seven iron now, put that slightly out the bottom, 62 miles an hour. So I slowed my swing down 10 mile an hour plus and it's launched dynamic loft now is 25.4, it's not really changing. So if shaft is the biggest denominator, well I've just swung considerably slower than I do in my ordinary shots, and the dynamic loft has stayed pretty much the same. So the dynamic loft isn't being affected to massive degrees by the shaft. The biggest denominator is you. Hope that helps, dynamic loft guys. Think about it, do a bit of research, see what's on the net, see what you can find out about dynamic loft, post comments below. Love to hear what you've got to say. Question of the week, great question here from Paul. This has come from YouTube. Hi Mark, I always look forward to when you post your new video online. Keep up the good work, thank you. Quick question about grip size. Um, I've got new grips on my irons, but I think they are too big, my hybrid and driver definitely have smaller grips than my irons, so on and so on. So look, grip size for Paul. Look, it's a common question I get asked, grip size. Um, there's a, a big element of personal preference in grip size. There's some obvious checkpoints. You're looking for not too much overhang here on your left hand, so moving onto the pad, the thumb pad of your right hand. You're looking for a, a neat fit. But saying that, I've got some grips here. This is a standard grip on my club, I use standard. This one's got two layers of tape and the gap between my fingers and my thumb pad feels almost the same. And this is four layers where the gap, again, it's, it's marginal how much it's changing the measurement of the gap. What is happening though for me is when I put the two layers of tape in my hand, it feels bigger, it feels too big. Um, when I put the four layers of tape in my hand here on this grip, it feels huge. It feels not very comfortable. And there's the key word, getting it comfortable in your hand. So grip size can affect shot, but it's marginal. It's one of the smallest denominators on what's going to affect 
left, right, highs and lows. It's much more about you getting a club in your hand that you feel comfortable with, getting a grip size that you feel fits your hand. There is no black and white fit. There's no size nine. I'm a size nine foot, UK size nine. Give me a size 12 shoe. I might like the look of it, but it doesn't fit. My foot moves around in it. It's not like that with your grip size so much, as long as you haven't got uh, big plates for hands or tiny hands. I mean, I've got quite small hands. I wear men's small glove. I can also fit into a lady's large glove, and I've used stand grips. If I go thinner, which is often what some of the charts will put me down as, it feels too thin. So I'm used to a regular size fit. No, just one layer of tape under here, just the one that sticks it on. And from there, I feel comfortable. But if you gave me the two layers of tape, I'm not going to probably change my scores through the year. All that's going to happen is I'm going to whinge a lot about feeling not so comfortable. So that again is the key word, get comfortable. No key, there's no chart. There are charts, but you get comfortable with your hand size on your club get somewhere, a good fitting centre that can show you some different layers of tape, so those show you some different thicknesses, see which one feels better in your hand. And the main thing you said in there as well, make sure your grips are the same on all your clubs. Never have one thicker or thinner on a different clubs, because as soon as you pick that club up, it's gonna just wig you out, it's gonna give you negative thoughts and you'll play worse. Hope that helps. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel, also thumbs up the video, post comments, love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social, the more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well, just follow the links, all in the description. Come and join the show, get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.